Hi, hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Sam and I'm so happy to see you today. Today we're doing my bookshelf tour. This is definitely something I plan to revisit and do like every year and my shelves change pretty frequently because I get really I guess anxious about like how they're set up and I'm always like looking to make more room because obviously I'm always getting more books because I have a problem but I'm really pleased with how they look right now and I was also like I've wanted to do this for a while I need to just do it now so I did I I've done it and I'm recording this intro after I've actually filmed it. It was sort of a learning curve on how to do it. My shelves are not easy to access with a tripod, so some of them are a lot better quality filmed than others. But that is just how it happened. And definitely next time I do this, like I said, I plan on doing this every year. Next time I do this, hopefully I will have the space to get a tripod in in front of every camera. Basically, my shelves are organized in a way that makes sense to me. And within that, they're definitely by series and authors are clumped together and genres tend to be clumped together and like um, stranger categories that I couldn't really like pinpoint and be like, yes, there's a reason these are near each other, but like they are, they just are, it happens. It makes sense to me and that's what matters because I'm the one who is not only always constantly looking at these books because I love them, but also has to find the books when I'm like, oh yes, I want to read this book, where is it? And right now they work really well and I like how they look a lot. I mean, without further ado, let's get going. There uh, there are a lot of books. I didn't count. Um, I, I don't want to count. I don't want to know how many books I have. That makes me feel weird, I guess, and super capitalistic, um, <laughs> I guess. I will say I don't take out every single book in this video to show you. I do that with several books, with a lot of them, but not with every single one. I thought that would take too long. And there are a lot of books on my shelves that I'm sure you've seen in other videos or on Instagram because I do read a lot of popular series. I will also recommend checking out my classics collection video, which I will have actually pinned later in the video when I talk about it a little more. And I'll also have it down below. But basically, if you want to know more about my classic books in particular, because I don't really pull those off the shelves, check out that video because I go in much more detail. Without further ado, let's go. Okay, so we're starting. This is my newest bookcase. I am I'm really short, so I'm standing on a chair. And I'm doing steady cam for like the first three shelves on here, so sorry about that. But this is my newest bookcase. It has some of my favorite series on here and some of my larger collections. I want to eventually have two kind of bookcases that look like this. Uh, it's from Ikea. I don't remember the exact one. I will try to find it and put it in the description down below. But yeah, up front. And I don't really keep trinkets on my, my bookcases normally, um, except for at the top. And we've got some of my Rosie Thorns mugs, or actually it's all of them, um, which are just lovely. Um, and then this one actually came from Fairy Loot, the rest are all Illumicrate mugs. I think my favorites are the Strange the Dreamer one and probably the Uprooted one, but they're all lovely. And then I have my collectible shadow hunter books um we have this is the fane edition of chain of iron and it it's really just a special dust jacket but look at how pretty that is and then i have an arc of chain of gold yeah and then if we go down here we have more shadow hunter books and i have my shadow hunter tarot cards which i love and, you know, Shadow Hunter books. I've been reading these books for a long time. A very long time. Um, favorites, definitely the Infernal Devices trilogy. I also am really enjoying these. City of Glass, my god. Oh, The Lost Book of the White actually disappointed me, um, I will say. Uh, Lord of Shadows is probably my favorite from the Dark Artifices trilogy. And this is a Cortana sword which I got from Illumicrate and is really cool. It's a letter opener, but I'll never use that as a letter opener. Are you kidding? It's a prop. And then going down, getting off the chair, we've got uh, just the very last part of my Shadowhunter collection because it's in the final one shelf. Um, we have the last hours calendar and the fairy tale pre-order book and oh, it's 
falling down the crack in the case. And then we have Queen of Air and Darkness. And then uh, no a history of notable shadow hunters uh, and denizens of the down world, which is just lovely. Then we have my Nevernight series. I do have all three in hardcovers. These two are from Illumicrate, so they have the black stained edges. And then we have one of my favorite authors of all time, even though I haven't read all of her books, and that is Robin Hobb. This trilogy is amazing. If you've never read the Farseer books and you like fantasy, you really should because it is just absolutely phenomenal. Like, it's just incredibly stunning and it blows my mind. I reread parts of it just constantly. I've only read the Ship of Magic so far in the Live Ship Trader series, but I do have Mad Ship and I hope to read it hopefully this year. I don't know when. And then I actually, these are my only folio editions, but they are gorgeous. And I'll take some out and insert some B-roll here, but... Um, yes, I have the, the folio set of the Farseer trilogy, and they are incredibly stunning. Okay, and we're switching to the tripod. Thank goodness. So this is my Lainey Taylor shelf. Hello. I... I love, um, <laughs> her book so much. I think of the two series, Strange the Dreamer is my favorite. Um, but I do have the Daughter of Smoke and Bones series. Uh, these are my original copies. And this one actually came, and I don't think it's in here, but it came with like a, a assigned art print, which I took out and I think is just in a drawer somewhere. But that was really neat. So I think this is a first edition. I remember when I bought this. I remember exactly what Barnes & Noble it was. Um, and I don't remember why I was like there. It wasn't for this book. I just like walked in and saw it. I was like, well, I have to buy it. And then these are the Illumicrate hardcovers of the UK 10th anniversary editions. I do want to get the U.S. paperback 10th anniversary editions, but these are just so pretty, like, th this is just, this is stunning. It's absolutely stunning. I try to do as many face-outs as I can because I just like how it looks. Obviously, the face-outs will have to go away once I start running out of space, but that's, you know, the goal. And then, oh, Strange to Dreamer. And I actually have um, paperback versions of these books as well but I don't have them on the shelf. They're tucked away somewhere. I read them in paperback and then I got the American hardcovers and I seriously, this is one of my all-time favorite series and so I tracked down hardcovers of the UK covers and just it, no regrets. These were surprisingly not that difficult to track down. I thought they'd be a little harder to find but they, I mean, it took a little bit of looking and it took a nice, a nice, a nice paycheck or two, but I, no regrets. They're stunning. They're just so pretty. I, uh, I love them so very much. Some of my most cherished, uh, editions of books are these two. Also, super sorry, I don't think this video is 100% like straight. I'm just having trouble with that, but it's as good as it's gonna get. Anyway, this is my V.E. Schwab shelf. I do have some of her YA books, but I'm not a big fan of her YA books, so it's mostly, uh, mostly her adult stuff is what I'm interested in reading. I haven't read any of her graphic novels either. That is something that I want to do, um, maybe not this year, but like sometime. But, you know, here we have the UK paperbacks of A Darker Shade of Magic series. And just, I really like these designs. I think they're very pretty. I also like the paperback, just quality of UK paperbacks. You're going to see a lot of UK and US and even some Australian copies of books. Because I am a collector and I'm crazy. Um, yeah. And then we have, this is the Illumicrate. You're going to see a lot of Illumicrate. I, I simp for them. But, <laughs> but this is the Illumicrate. A uh, hardcover collector's edition of A Darker Shade of Magic, and it's just absolutely stunning. It's got these silver edges, and this is the end pages. It's just absolutely uh, gorgeous. Cannot wait for the next two books to arrive. And then I have, this is the just collector's edition, and then I have the original trilogy. I have the U.S. copies of Vicious and Vengeful, um, a lot of these are signed because I actually got to meet her at a Vengeful uh, tour stop, which was incredible. I don't remember which ones I got personalized. Um, I think maybe it was just Vengeful. Yeah, look at that. 
I she is so sweet. I love her so much. She's like one of my just like <laughs> literary icons and just like as a person she seems so pure and just like perfect. Um then I have I love love these covers. These are the UK hard covers of Vicious and Vengeful. Oh my god, like they're just stunning. I think these are some of my favorite covers just of all time across like the board. Yes, I love them two bits. I of uh, I should say on the shelf, I haven't actually read Vengeful yet. Oh, that's the only one I haven't read. I think I'm just like holding off because I I know that I always have a V Schwab book to read kind of situation. And then we have my Addie LaRue collection. It's big. I will get every edition of this book that I can. So here we go. Uh, first off, this is the Forbidden Planet edition. It's blue. It's got the blue stained edges. It's got these end pages and it's got Addie on the inside. And it was kind of a hell to get a copy of this because even though I had it pre-ordered, um, there was something that went wrong with the order and I contacted them. I was like, hey, like, what's going on? Like, I was charged. Is it, like, not happening? It says, with this weird message, and it took them, like, a month to get back to me. They're like, no, it's fine. It's on its way. And then it took, like, another month. But, yeah. Anyway, this is the Waterstones exclusive edition. It is signed by the author. It's got, these are probably my favorite end pages. Like, they're so pretty. And it's got Addie under the tree there. Just absolutely stunning. It's got the gold detailing. And then we have, oh my god, the Illumicrate, which is my favorite cover because it doesn't have this Neil Gaiman sticker on there. It says joyous, and it's it's like, yes, good, Neil Gaiman tagged it. That's amazing, but, like, it's so pretty without it because, like, this one, I don't know. I just, I don't like the stickers on there, but it's silver, which is stunning, and it's got those silver edges, so it actually matches a, um, a darker shade of magic quite nicely, um, and it's got these end pages where you can very clearly see the heart in the trees. And it's got them on the outside as well, which is very pretty. And then we've got the regular UK edition, and it does actually have some water damage, which is a bit of a shame. I don't know if you can see that it just doesn't stay flat. It's kind of like fluffed there, but that's okay. This is just the regular edition. And it's got these end pages again, and it's got Luke under the tree. So, yeah. Um, does the UK edition. We also have the Owl Crate edition. Look at that. I like this. I feel like we don't see a lot of uh, alternate editions for US covers, but I like the naked hardback. I like the simplicity of it. I love the back of it. It says, never pray to the gods that answer after dark. So that's a stunner. And it does have a bookmark. Um, these are the end pages, which are also very pretty. Yeah. Gorgeous. And here I have... And these were the um, pre-order incentives, I believe. These were the pre-order incentives. So I have some art. Which are just gorgeous. And then this was the tour stop poster. Maybe I have that reversed, but yeah, this is a tour stop poster, which is like one of my favorite pieces of art that I have, and I keep all these in this envelope. I did go to two of the tour stops, so I have like a million copies of this book. I've actually given away a couple of the copies I have, just because I have so many. And then this is the regular US edition, kind of, it's the Barnes & Noble exclusive, which just means it has a little bonus. And the back, these are the end pages, and uh, you can't see it, but the, oh, you guys you kind of can. The birds are imprinted on there. And they are doing um, collector's editions of this book coming out later this year. I have pre-ordered both of them, because I have no shelf control. Another, another thing you'll notice about this video. All right, down here, this is mostly my Lee Bardugo shelf. Um, I do obviously have The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang over here, and these are the Illumicrate editions. What did I say? There's gonna be a lot of Illumicrate, which are just gorgeous, and they have these stained edges, which every time I see them are stunning. And it does also have the art on the inside, um, so that's what the naked Poppy War looks like, and then it also has just this gorgeous interior art on the dust jacket. So, but other than the Poppy War, this is just my Lee Bardigo shelf.
So of course we have the Grisha verse books. We have so many of them. I have the U.S. Collector's Edition of Shadow and Bone, a paperback with the new cover of Ruin and Rising. I do want to get all three of the original Grisha books with the new covers. I just haven't picked them up. Hard covers with the original covers, which I do prefer. This is the Fairy Loot edition of the UK Collector's Edition of Shadow and Bone, which really just means it has these nicely stained edges, and I'm all for. I really hope they do the whole trilogy like this, because then it will match, of course, the UK Collector's Editions of Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom, which are just stunning. If you've you've probably seen them um, on other people's shelves or in videos, because they're so pretty. But like, they really acted themselves with these. They're just out of this world amazing. Yeah, um, <laughs> just incredible, incredible copies. And of course, I do have Six of Crows, Crooked Kingdom. I have King of Scars, which I haven't read. And then I have two copies of, um, was it Rule of Wolves? This is just a naked, regular hardback because I didn't mean to get two, but I forgot I had this pre ordered from somewhere and it arrived. And then I picked up the Barnes and Noble version of Rule of Wolves, which height wise matches King of Scars. So that's all I really care about. But for now, we'll just face that out. Um, and yeah, I haven't read King of Scars or Rule of Wolves. It's not high on my priority list. I've heard such mixed things that I'm like, if I get to it, I get to it kind of situation. Then we have Language of Thorns, which is like probably my favorite Lee Bardugo book. It's just uh, out of this world. I have two copies of, I feel like such a bad fan. What is it called? The Lives of Saints. I have two copies of The Lives of Saints, which is, I've not read. I probably won't ever read cover to cover. Um, I really just have it because it's a nice prop more than anything else and then I have Ninth House which I enjoyed but I thought there was a bit too much sexual assault in there for me to be like yeah this book's great. I am really excited for book two of that series. I think as much as I like the Grisha verse I'm happy she's doing adult books. Someone actually pointed out to me recently they're like yeah Six of Crows would be so much better if Kaz could say fuck and I was like yeah you're right it would be so much better. Um, like, leveled up. But that's that's neither here nor there. All right, and this final shelf kind of breaks the not having trinkets on my shelf just because I didn't have anywhere else to put Rin and Yukio. I love these. There's some really cool statues. I really like Blue Exorcist. Um, it's one of the few animes I watched and one of the few mangas I've read. And so this has, like, a lot of my big books that just don't fit anywhere else. Um, over here, you cannot really see them, but I have every single quiver that I have worked on, which is the literary magazine I was a part of. This is the very first one. Um, yeah, I loved working on this literary magazine. It was great. This, yeah, great experience. I, I, I love quivers to death, still. Uh, then I have, and I'm gonna pull this out too, just to show it, I have Icarus and the Sun by Gabriel Piccolo. Uh, this was a, um, like, crowd-funded thing. Um, I actually haven't read it. It took so long to get here, which is whatever. I don't mind. It's gorgeous that I just, I haven't, I haven't even read it yet because I was like, oh yeah, super excited for it when I uh, joined the crowdfunding, but I don't know. I'm sure I will read it. I'm sure I'll love it because I love Gabriel Piccola's art. Then we have The Art of Haikala, um, which is like an art book. Um, Mysteries of the Unexplained, which is, oh my god, one of my favorite books ever. I should just do a video on it. It is from, like, Reader's Digest from, like, the 70s, I think. Oh, the 90s, I guess. It says the 11th printing, March 1992. I don't think it's got stuff up to date from the 90s, but it has, like, weird conspiracy theories and, like, things that happened. Like, it's such a cool book. I absolutely freaking adore this book. I've had it forever. My grandfather gave it to me, and I just will never get rid of it because it is so neat. Then we have, oh, another cherished book. This is Arthur Spiderworks' Field Guide to the Fantastical World Around You, part of the Spiderworks series by uh, Tony Ditserlizzi and Holly Black, and just, like, it has such stunning art in here, and, like, really makes you feel like these fairies are, like, real. Um, I, I don't think this is in print anymore, which is, like, such a shame because this is one of the best books I've ever received and you can see it's like super beat up because um, I took it everywhere with me as a child and I still, yeah, I just cherish this thing. It did have a dust jacket, I took it off, no regrets there. <laughs> no idea where the dust jacket is though. Um, you're gonna sense a little trend, I love dragons. I love dragons so much, but I have um, a practical guide to dragons, a practical guide to dragon riding, practical guide to monsters, that's like, I think a D&D &D thing, but I got it when I was little. 
Oh, this one is so cool. This is how to raise and keep a dragon. This was a Christmas gift when I was like in elementary school and it like fully convinced me that I could get a pet dragon. Like it talks about different dragon types, but it also like talks about like how to train them. Um, like look, dragon selection guidelines. Like your dragon comes home. Um, training begins. It's kind of written like a pet manual, like you're getting a puppy, um, but it's for dragons and it is so cool um yeah there's like addresses you could write to i think and like books you could buy like which don't exist but i definitely tried to get a pet dragon I'm not gonna lie then we have um a zine i guess it's a fan book for the dragon prince and it's really cool i really like this show this is a fun little zine it's got art um just of all the characters and it's set up uh, it's like organized in a really neat way um, by emotion. Um, so yeah, Echoes of Thunder and Anthology. I don't think you can get this anymore, but I could be wrong. But this is a really cool project. And then I have The Art of the Dragon Prince, which is the officially published one. I have The World of Ice and Fire, which is part of the Game of Thrones world. I have Stranger Things, The World Turned Upside Down, which honestly, I like Stranger Things, but I bought this because it is one of the coolest design books I ever got. Um, it is, it's designed like a, an old library book, like it's got like the plastic wrap, and it's like fair, um, and like you can take this off and it, it looks like it's like an old library book. Um, and it's just, yeah. And it is really an interesting book, I guess. Um, got lots of stuff. If you're a big Stranger Things fan, you definitely want to pick this up. Um, I'm a, I'm a fine Stranger Things fan. But um, yeah, I mean, it's just really cool is why I got it. Then I have Hamilton the Revolution, because I love Hamilton. I have a Marie Sendak book. This is where the wild things are. A classic. One of the only, like picture books I have on my shelves and I have the illustrated uh, version of the princess bride which is actually the version I read and I don't recommend reading the illustrated version because I think it took me like three times longer just because of how big the pages were then I have blind spot by Teju Cole I actually had to read this for a class but I think it's a really neat book it is a book of photography with little um vignettes and this is not like traditional photography. It's not like something you'd look at and say, wow, that's beautiful. They're like the blind spots, the things you don't see, you know, you like just your, your mind automatically goes, oh, that's not like a thing I see. So you tend to like put it out. Um, and of course it's got a deeper meaning than that as well, but it is a very, very cool book. Very much recommend it. And then I have my arcs that I haven't read yet. If I read an arc, it goes up on my shelf or uh, I put it in a free library if I didn't like it. But we have Shadow of the Gods, which I'll be reading soon. The Black Tongue Thief by Christopher Bullman. The World Gives Way by Marissa Levison. The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri, which I'm super, super excited to read. And For the Wolf by Hannah Witten, which I'm also really excited to read. I think like this, this, I, I honestly, The World Gives Way, I'm like, eh, about it. It's like, maybe I'll enjoy it. And then I have uh, the only graphic novels that I want to display, and that's Sandman, Hellblazer, Hawkeye, um, the one written by Matt Fraction, Saga, Quiver, uh, I'm sorry, Green Arrow, Quiver, which is like one of the best graphic novels ever. Uh, Over the Garden Wall, Volume 1, Pierce Brown's Red Rising, Son of Ares, and American Gods, um, Volume 1, Graphic Novel Adaptation. And then over here we have individual issues of American Gods. Over over here we have some um, bookmarks as well that are just like squished in over there that I forgot about. Okay, back on the chair. Um, here we've got some things that I've just gotten. Um, <laughs> this uh, bookend from Illumicrate, The Mortal Cup, a teapot. Um, really just some cool stuff from like Illumicrate or Fairy Loot. There's Addy. There's a Thurible. And then we go down and we have, I think this is all Y Fantasy. Um, this is an arc of the Gilded Ones, but it's very pretty. I haven't actually read that yet, even though it's an arc. Um, I just picked up the Princess, uh, Princess Will Save You. Um, 
I'm super excited to read A Dark and Hollow Star, that's why I have two copies. An Ace of Shades I've been meaning to read forever, and Trader's Kiss, and We Hunt the Flame. Like, all of these I've been meaning to read forever. I don't think I've read any of these on here. Um, I'm currently, like, listening to Children of Blood and Bone, so I guess that's the only one. Maybe it'll be done by the time this video goes up. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really bad. I haven't, haven't read that yet. Um, <laughs> oops. Uh, then going down a shelf. And I actually think these shelves moving forward, I have to all do freehand for just all of them because my tripod won't fit well because it's kind of squishy. Um, but there we have the Bear and the Nightingale and an arc of the Girl in the Tower. I loved Girl in the Tower. I should reread Bear and the Nightingale and finally finish that series. Bone Shard's Daughter. Oh, God, I want to read. Oh, my God. <laughs> my Ted Williams collection. Oh, I, oh, my God. I loved the, I loved the Austin Ard trilogy. I loved, I loved it so much. You were so good. You were too good. Um, I haven't read the other ones yet. <laughs> then we've got some copies of Name of the Wind and Wise Man's Fear, so I've got the 10th anniversary edition. I really hope they do a matching one for Wise Man's Fear, but I'm thinking they won't. Um, uh, Slow Regard Sign Things. These are the Galance, like, collector's editions. They look like this. They're super pretty. I love them. Yeah, they're really comfortable to read at that size and that quality. So it's obviously by Patrick Rothfuss. Uh, then we have The Lies of Locke Lamore and Red Seas Under Red Skies in those, like, same editions, which I'll show you those too. They're really pretty. I want to get the third one in this edition and, and finally read this series. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe get to that. And then we have Sorcerer to the Crown by Jen Cho. Or Zen Cho, I'm sorry. Then we have my Sarah J. Mass shelf, which actually goes across two bookcases, so I'll show you that. We've got Crescent City, we've got the Tor edition of Crescent City, the Collector's edition of A Court of Thorns and Roses, my original A Court of Thorns and Roses, and then we have, um, like we do, like my original copies that I read, next to the gorgeous Aluma Crate, Alethean Art, I'm sure I pronounced that wrong, um, covers that they did, so I just think they're so stunning and then it does go over i don't have a spare copy of a quarter frost and starlight yet so when i do that'll like go there there's a hole at the end you see and then i have uh the tour edition of a quarter silver flames that's the copy i read and we have my throne of glass series and we've got um the name of the sword is escaping me because i'm an idiot but we got aelin's sword here and um, then my collector's edition of Throne of Glass, and I fucking love that series. That's one of my favorite series of all time. Then we've got some more, I think this is all adult fantasy. Um, beside, yeah, no, I think it's all adult fantasy. Um, we've got, over here is uh, City of Brass, uh, The Magician's Trilogy by Lev Grossman. I've, I've only read the first book in that trilogy, but I love it. Then we have a small <laughs> mini shrine, I guess, to Naomi Novik. We have Deadly Education, three different copies. That one there is the Owl Crate, and that is the Aluma Crate. There's some controversy around that book. I enjoyed it. Is that bad to say? I enjoyed it. Um, Uprooted and Spinning Silver in the UK hardcovers. That's the Aluma Crate editions. They're gorgeous. Then we have Uprooted and Spinning Silver in the editions that I read. And then the entire Temerar series. These are the UK editions because they match so much nicer than the US covers do. Um, for example, that's just the first one. And I'll put a picture of, like, the U.S. cover, like, here. So you can see, I just think the U.K. covers are nicer, and they're a nicer size to read, because I think a lot of the U.S. ones only come in mass market, which is kind of annoying. Um, I, I bought this one years ago and still haven't read it. <laughs> Oops. Um, but the rest I actually just picked up, like, really recently from Half Price Books. They were all there. I was like, this is a sign, so I bought them. And then I have Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, which is one of my favorite books. And it is the... Ooh, this is the Bloomsbury Modern Classics edition and just a stunner. I, I love this edition. I don't have my original edition anymore, um, which was just a mass market uh, paperback size. Next that we have Pure Nessie, which was one of my favorite books of last year. It was phenomenal. If you haven't read Pure Nessie, what are you doing? Go read Pure Nessie. And then we have two copies of The Nice Circus, which did not impress me. Not a big fan of that book. And now I'm sitting on the ground, but here we have Aragon. I have read this entire series. My original copies are elsewhere, but I do have them. Steelheart Trilogy by Brandon Sanderson. I've only read Steelheart. And then we go into the rest of my Sanderson books. We have Elantris, Warbringer. So these are all Cosmere, um, the Mistborn books. We have Kings, Words of Radiance, and Arcanum Unbounded. Haven't read Arcanum Unbounded and haven't read Warbreaker. Uh, and haven't actually read 
these too. Um, I do also have some coins that are like Mistborn coins, which I got from Shire Post Mint, I think is the name of the company. Yeah, Shire Post Mint. So we have, um, oh, I wish it said what they were. Oh, uh, so this is an Ellendel clip and a golden boxing at the bottom. This is a uh, flattened clip, which is a copper coin. So it's Vin's like flattened clip that she plays with. And I think I have another one of those somewhere. Uh, this is a Final Empire clip and boxing. This is a bronze clip. It's very cool. I've never taken these out of the packaging. And this is an ash blackened bronze clip, um, which is probably my favorite one. Um, yeah, never taken these out of the packaging. This is a, oh, what's this? Hold on. This is uh, another ash blackened bronze clip. Shire Post is really cool. I think they're still around. Um, and then I have like proof of what it is right there. Then we have um, my Neil Gaiman stuff starts. That goes onto the next shelf as well. So I'll show you that. Um, and I do the next bookcase, but we've got Amanda Palmer's The Art of Asking, which is a book I really love. Uh, the View from the Cheap Seats, which is like nonfiction. I haven't read it. Selected Fiction, which I've read, but mostly in their original forms. And Good Omens, which I read and loved. The show is good. I would say the show's better, but only slightly. Okay, this is easily the hardest shelf to record because it's so low to the ground, um, or so far the hardest. There's going to be more difficult ones. But we have some Kira Cass books. I had more of the selection series, but I got rid of it because I only really like the original trilogy. Then we have the first four Iron Fae books by Julie Kagawa. Similarly to the selection, I only liked those four, so I got rid of the rest. Then we have the Archived and the Unbound. My This is a Fairy Loot edition of Bone Cryer's Moon and a matching Bone Cryer's Dawn. I was not a huge fan of Bone Cryer's Moon, but I think it's really pretty, so I kept it. Um, which doesn't happen that often. Um, but also, here's Bone Cryer's Dawn, which are they not just gorgeous, gorgeous books? They are never going to be favorites, but I will keep them for a while, probably. And then we have Forest of Souls by Lori uh, M. Lee. I haven't read that yet. Dangerous Remedy, which I haven't read yet, but I do really want to read. Shielded, Master of One, I really want to read. A lot of these are fairy loot uh, editions. I, it just happened that way. And then Havenfall by Sarah um, Sarah Holland. I haven't read, like, most of these. Once you get, actually, like, once you get to Bone Cryer's Dawn, the rest of these I haven't read yet. Okay, so more Sarah J. Mash books. Um, we are at the top of the second shelf, so we've got my UK editions of, like, everything. Um, then we have French editions of V.E. Schwab books. We also have a Bryce and Hunt candle. Um, French editions are very pretty. Kind of hard to take down, so I'm not going to. <laughs> then we go into, this is all um, more fantasy, I guess, basically. Mostly YA, but some adults at the end. We have Fairy Loot hardcover editions of Sabah Tahir's Ember and the Ashes Quartet, which I haven't read, and I was putting off because I was like, I really want matching editions. And I had resigned myself to just waiting until the paperbacks were out and had matching covers, but this came along first, so I'll be reading these soon. Then we have An Enchantment of Ravens, which I really want to read. Star Touched Queen and Crown of Wishes. I read Star Touched Queen so long ago. It's due for a reread. Oh my god, the Lumatir Trilogy by Melina Marchetta. No one talks about these books, but they're so good. They're a little dense, but they are some of the best YA fantasy I've ever read. Then we've got my Samantha Shannon collection. Um, I read these two. That's it. Um, I do love these original covers. So they're all in their original covers. I have the indie edition of Mask Falling as well. And I also have On the Merits of a Naturalness, which is one of my prized uh, possessions, I'll be honest. And then we have Priory of the Orange Tree, which I will be reading probably next month. And I cannot wait to get to it. So this shelf is a combination of some favorites and also some that I like want to get to post haste. Um, and a lot of these are, are more the latter. So we have The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Adea, uh, or Adier, I'm sorry, 
Fable by Adrian Young, Winter Song by S.J. Jones, Kingdoms of Ash and Briars. I haven't read any of those. Really want to. Then we have the Old Kingdom series by Garth Nix. I've not finished the series, but I do want to. Um, oh my god, I just want to own every edition of these series as well, can I just say. We have, um, I don't know what the series is called, the Air Awakens series maybe, but I have the first two, um, Air Awakens and Fire Falling by Elise Kova. And this gap is here because I'm going to be filling it with some books that are on their way. We have Legend Born by Tracy Dion. I read this earlier this year and holy moly is this, this is one of my new favorites, like guys. We don't even have a title or a release date for book two. I'm dying. I need it. Oh my god, I need it. Uh, Between the Devil and the Deep Blue Sea. I don't see anyone talk about this. It's by April Genevieve Tucholki. It is so good. I know there's a sequel. I don't feel like I needed to read the sequel after I read this one. It is gothic. It's brilliant. It's amazing. Go read it. It's amazing. Graceling, also amazing. My original copies are, I don't know where, so I bought that one because I couldn't find the other ones. We have the Winner's Curse Trilogy, which I haven't read, and The Midnight Lie, which I have read, and I loved. One of my favorite books. I really want a matching edition because they changed the freaking cover. Then we have the Truth Witch series, or what I have of it because I'm a bad fan, um, but, and then we have the um, pre-order postcards that are for the new book coming out. Oop. Bit hard to get a uh, recording of. Okay, I'm gonna give up because they're falling and it's hard to do with one hand. I love this series so much. I need to reread and catch up for the next book. And then obviously here's the, the Sarah J. Mass shelf again. All right, then we have one of my all-time favorite books, The Starless Sea. Yes, I have four copies. It's not enough. A Discovery of Witches, which I haven't read and I want to, but I have no idea when. Not high on my priority list. Song of Achilles, also in the Bloomsbury Modern Classics Edition because it is so pretty. This book's amazing. But, and I would argue even better, is Circe. Both of these by Madeline Miller. Once in Future Wishes by Alex Harrow. This is a uh, Luma Crate Edition, I think. Want to get to it. Don't know when. Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. I need to just read this. Just like get it over with and read it and see if I like it. Kingdom of the Wicked. This is a stunning fairy lead edition, like blown away by the detailing there. Then we have the Long Price Quartet, I think is what's called by Daniel Abraham. Haven't read it yet, want to. Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie. See how I feel about the Daniel Abraham series. Haven't read it yet, really want to. Uh, some Game of Thrones books. Love these covers. I just love these covers. Um, I don't know what edition they are. They're UK copies. Um, the Night Angel Trilogy by Brent Weeks in this amazing matte black anniversary edition. One of my favorite fantasy series of all time. Hope he writes more in it. Really good. Perfect Shadow, uh, like a little novella. Nimona and the Prince and the Dressmaker. Some just graphic novels. Then we have some more Neil Gaiman books. American Gods is one of my favorite books of all time, and Neil Gaiman is one of my favorite authors. Uh, so we have American Gods. Anansi Boys, Black Dog, and the um, the Moniker of the Glen. These are like illustrated by Daniel Ag Agnias, I think is how you say it. They're so cool. Some of my favorite editions. I remember when I got these, they were just stunning when they came in. And then I have the 10th anniversary edition of American Gods. Then I have these really, I love these like paperback ones with the weird covers. Um, each cover is like a different era, genre. I even don't mind that they don't match up in size because I think it's neat. Then we have Neverwhere. This is the Chris Riddell illustrated version, which is the best version. Okay. I love Chris Riddell. Um, then just Neverwhere and American Gods. And then two copies of Norse Mythology, both of which were picked up in an airport in England. Then we have The Last Wish and Blood of Elves by um, uh, Andrzej Sapkowski. I'm Polish. I don't know how to say it. I'm sorry. I I bought Blood of Elves thinking, yes, I'll read this after I finish The Last Witch, Wish, but um, there's actually another uh, compilation of short stories in between them, so I, I just haven't picked that up yet. I will. I, Lucifer by Glenn Duncan. I haven't read. I Honestly, it's probably getting near to unhaul, unhaul status. Um, the first two books in the Suki Stackhouse series by Charlene Harris. Haven't read those yet. Kind of waiting until I'm in the mood. I have a whole story behind those books that I will tell someday, and it involves Six Flags Great America. So, you know. <laughs> and then Wake of Vultures by Lila Bowen, which also haven't read and is also maybe getting near to. Unhaul status. We'll see. 
All right, so over here, kind of like nestled in, is this tiny little uh, book called The Jewel and Her Lapidary, which I need to reread. And if on the reread I don't like, I'm going to get rid of because I remember very little except that it was not as good as I wanted it to be. Um, the Ryra Revelations by Michael J. Sullivan are some of my favorite fantasy of all time. Haven't liked anything else he's written, but I love these books. I will take them to my grave. The first two books in the Lycanius trilogy by James Islington. I loved book one, should reread it because it didn't stick with me very well. And I need to pick up book three. The Inheritance Trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. Amazing stuff. I think it's closer to new adult than adult fantasy. Pick it up. This is the uh, very loot edition of Lore. It's pretty is why I kept it. I don't think I'm ever going to read it. Sorry. Um, I will probably gift it to a friend at some point. The Morganville Vampires Bind Ups Volumes 1 through 4. R.I.P. Rachel Kane. She's one of the sweetest people. I got to meet her one time. She is just, or she was just absolutely amazing. Um, we are uh, much poorer uh, for her loss. Then we have the collector's edition of Caravelle and the UK hardcovers of the trilogy. Um, an arc of Caravelle and this is the Thai edition of Caravelle. And this is, <laughs> this is the Tesco edition of Caravelle. Because I think it's neat. Yeah, I had more editions of this series, and I got rid of them because uh, the final book was not good. Then I have Fortuna by Kristen Merbeth, I think is how you say it, which was a Christmas gift, and I haven't read it yet. I'm so sorry. I, I plan on reading it um, soon. It's got lesbians, so I don't know why I'm putting it off. Then we have The Keepers, book one, a wizard name now. This was one of my favorite childhood books. It's by Jackie French Kohler. It is about a girl. Um, there are dragons. She is a princess. She goes off to be basically a wizard. And uh, women are not allowed to be wizards, but she goes on this quest. And honestly, it's one of those books that's like stamped into my memory. Just, just forever stamped into my memory. And I love it to death. I never actually read past book one, but book one enchanted me so very much that I never felt the need to. Okay, we're going up to the next bookcase. I'm not going to be able to squeeze my, um, my chair into these next three bookcases so the tops of them i'm so sorry they're not gonna be great um not gonna be great footage i will do my best okay lots of funko pops um and otherwise it's rick riordan books rick riordan books and funko pops and toothless all the way up there there's an alchemy um these are copies of the mistborn series and they're signed yeah that's it my harry dresden shelf this is all Dresden Files by, uh, by Jim Butcher. Freaking love this series. One of my absolute favorites. Oh my god, it's so good. Look, it's a wild clans. Um, there's also a dragon, and behind them's a bunch of dragons I'd like to get on display. And my, like, book sleeves. And keep them there. I should actually talk about these special little shelves I did for myself because I needed more room. So I made more shelves and added them to the bookcase and they helped a little bit. It wasn't that great of an idea, I don't think. I made a surprisingly weird angle for this shelf, but these are some classics and literature books and some poetry actually. So we have here um, some penguin, penguin vintage. We have To Kill a Mockingbird, which I'll be reading next month. <laughs> We have A Fun a Winter's Night of Traveler, and it's got all my tabbies, because this is an amazing book that I read this year. Go read it. Seriously amazing. has an amazing start to it and everything. Uh, a copy of Invisible Cities by Italo. These, so these are by Italo Calvino. So a copy of Invisible Cities, and another copy of On a Winter's Night of Traveler, because I needed it. This is the only Murakami I've owned, but I haven't read it. I've read other Murakami. I just don't own them. Don't ask. Um, <laughs> this is Colorless Sakuru Tazaki and His Years of Pilgrimage. Then we have Bride's Head Revisited by Evelyn Waugh, which I really want to read, but I'm just not in the mood to have my heart broken. Okay. Uh, some uh, English, English, some English, some Penguin Classics, the um, English Library, is that what they're called? The Hard, The Cloth Bound, whatever. We have Prime Prejudice, Jane Eyre, Canterbury Tales, which I got in the, t in the city of Canterbury. Uh, Christmas Carol and other Christmas writings, Grim Tales, and War and Peace. And then we have the Perfect Penguin. Is that what they're called? A popular Penguin edition of The Secret History, which I actually just finished rereading. And, wow, I forgot how much anxiety this book gave me. It's really good. Then we have, oh, oh my god. Then we have my favorite book of all time, which is A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. 
She has another book coming out later this year. No, actually, it's early next year, so not in January. And, um, God, I hope it doesn't break my heart. This one left me just devastated. And another copy of Little Life. Then we have The Lost Spells, which is poetry, and I freaking loved. And Bluettes, which is, like, sort of essays, but sort of not, um, by Maggie Nelson, which is also amazing. Okay, so this is kind of my, like, romance shelf. I have, obviously, Red, White, and Royal Blue over here, which I did really enjoy, but I'm kind of more excited for uh, Casey McQuiston's next book. And we have the Bridgerton series, which is really bad. Oh my god, guys, I can't believe I'm doing this to myself. And then we have the Seducing the Sedgwicks series by Cat Se Sebastian, which um, I, I've kind of talked about quite a bit, but... Uh, okay, good, great. Um, it's just how I would say that. It's queer historical romance. Speaking of queer historical romance, one of my favorite novels of all time, The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. I know, as an author, Mackenzie Lee is a little controversial because she's done some not great things, but I love this book. Like, look at... This was one of the first books I ever tabbed. <laughs> I love it so very much, and I'm very excited for book three. I <laughs> I haven't actually read this one yet. Um, I will before book three comes out, but yeah. And then I have Wolf Hall by Har Hilary Mantel, which I haven't read yet, but really would like to. And then we're going down to this is like a little clustery shelf, I guess. I don't know what else to call it. We've got um, some things from Galaxy's Edge. And then we have Mirio, because I love Mirio. And some playing cards, because I love playing cards. Actually, I play a lot of solitaire. And then book-wise, we have two of the mini editions of the Throne of Glass series. Um, the Solus, or no, the Parasol Protectorate series by Gal Carriger. And two mini, uh, like, Shadowhunter books that, honestly, I always forget about. And then these are from Illumicrate. They are um, book plates inspired by the Starless Sea. So I kept them there because I really love them. And I'll never probably use them in any book. Okay, here we have another mini shelf. I have, obviously, Hamlet, um, The Age of Innocence, which I really want to read, Edith Wharton's The Reckoning, which is a little black penguin book, um, a French copy of The Little Prince, this really pretty edition of The Great Gatsby. Let me see if I can hold it out and show it to you. It's a quite pretty. Um, if, you, if you're curious about classics, I do have a video on classics, so I'd go about it more in detail. Some Sherlock Holmes, another uh, set of A Song of Ice and Fire, Coraline, up top there because I just had where else to put it. Um, the Magician's Guild, John Scalzi books, and Tell Chaser Song, which I, I really am looking forward to reading Tell Chaser Song. Okay, I'm really trying. This is a horrible angle. I'm so sorry. Um, I guess, um... I don't even know what to say. We've got my tiny little collection of crime books over here. It's very tiny. <laughs> my most recent acquisition has been this, um, The Mystery of Henri Pick. Oh my goodness. Which looks really interesting, and I'm excited. Um, it's a mystery centered on, um, like, publishing and manuscripts. So, of course, it, like, drew me. I am not a big mystery reader, but I would really like to try that this year, which I've talked about a little bit. And then, oh, at an even worse angle. Sorry, the lighting is horrible. Um, we have a little bit of nonfiction. The Book of Swords um, series, The Eye of the Queen, which is one of the weirdest books I've ever read, but also one that I think about, like, constantly. Um, <laughs> So there's that. And then we have um, the first six Warrior Cats books. Oh, up here we have some Narnia books as well. Warrior Cats and then Animorphs because uh, classic. And then we have the Aeronauts Windlass, which I haven't read. I'm honestly not sure if I'm interested in reading it. We'll see. Kill the Farm Boy, which sounds like a lot of fun, but again, not sure if I'm actually going to read it. And then we have my Golden Compass and um, the uh, Book of Dust uh, series. Okay, I am so sorry. This is an awful, also an awful angle, but we have my sci-fi here, um, the Illuminate Chronicle, Skyward. Oh my god, I love The Expanse. I've only read the first three, but I love this series so much. Oh my gosh. Um, this series by Scott Westerfeld, also fantastic if you've never read it. Seven Devils and The Space Between Worlds. Both of those came from Illumicrate, and I want to read them. I just haven't yet. Um, then we've got, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Please don't get seasick. We've got um, some Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner books, the Red Rising series. I don't have, um, I don't have the most recent one because I'm a bad fan. So you know, we'll talk about that later. 
um, the Unbroken and the Ravenous Dark. Oh my god, I both of these are super high on my TBR. Then we have some Goldsboro um, books, which is something new for me, is been trying Goldsboro um, subscriptions. And of the ones that I've received so far, I think I'm most excited for the Absolute book. I'm also loving that they come in like these protective plastics. Um, I might get some for other books just because I think it's really neat. And I know typically I've been going like down my shelf, but I'm actually gonna flop you up here. So we've got some more classics. We've got Ernest Hemingway, Virginia Woolf, um, there's an Anthony Trollope, some Tolstoy, Valette, which I, I, I have to show this edition because I've not seen anyone else with it, but I think that's just so lovely. Um, I do really want to read some Brontes. I've got like a real craving for it like, like right now. Um, Jane Austen books, uh, Sylvia Townsend Warner, whom I love, a Torve Jarnson, uh, who created Moments, if, if that name sounds familiar, and you're like, how? Um, Abigail by Magda Sasbo is one that's super high on my list, and then Beware of Pity by Stefan Zweig, also high on my list. And then going down to some more classics, we have Love in the Time of Cholera, this is the illustrated edition, uh, Little Women by Louisa May Alcott, which is a favorite, and then um, the Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. Like I just said, I'm in the mood for Bronte, so I'll probably either pick up Tenant of Wildfell Hall or Villette soon, I'm sure. Fyodor Dostoevsky's The Brothers Karamazov, War in Peace by Leo Tolstoy, like in this gorgeous Russians uh, vintage edition, which I'm just in love with. Oh, there go the other books. <laughs> Tolstoy, what have you done? Um... We've got some Shakespeare, some classical classics um, with Homer and Virgil. So yeah, like I said, check out that uh, classics collection video if you want to see more details on those because it's pretty pretty informative. All right, then we have some classic science fiction and fantasy books. I've got coupled copies of Dune, several copies of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and I love them all, and I would pull them out, but this is a very hard angle to film at, and I don't have an available arm. Um, some more classics, uh, Jane Wolfe, Lynn the Mist I'm really excited for, and some Jeff Vandermeer, as well as some China Melville. Um, and kind of, we're turning over again. We're going to this shelf. Uh, we've got My Simon Snow Collection and A Lamp in the Way. I'm so sorry. Um, Cemetery Boys, Docile. Oh my god, Docile and First Become Ashes are some of my favorite sci-fi. Um, Winter's Orbit, I can't wait. The Binding, I can't wait to get to. A Fire and Star, Sweet and Bitter Magic. And then, oh my goodness going down again we have um you'll probably notice there's a trend in the shelf and the last shelf it's like queer uh fiction and fantasy mostly fantasy um and deeper waters is new i just picked that up mr impossible is new i just picked that up i cannot wait you're gonna um it, it'll be up after this but there's gonna be a reading vlog for mr impossible okay then we have the lunar chronicle series um old covers and new covers i don't have all the new covers uh, Titus Grown and Gormenghast by Mervyn Peak. It does have a bookmark in it, but I'm not very far and I don't know when I'll get a chance. So Max Gladstone, um, A Closed and Common Orbit. That's an ARC that I found in a charity shop in Brighton and I haven't read it because it's the second one. <laughs> Space Unicorn Blues and Solari Justice. And then going down to the bottom shelf, we have two more copies of A Secret History, because why not? Um, the Octopus Man, Migrations, the Midnight Library. Uh, this is an arc of The Light of the Midnight Stars. I I intended to write a review. I don't know if that'll actually get out. Uh, some Kazuo Ishiguro, Balzac, and The Little Chinese Seamstress. I loved that book so very much. Um, it was so very good. Like, it was just delightful. Uh, Night Walking and Light Migrations are non-fiction. I don't have a lot of non-fiction. Some poetry, The Girl and the Stars, the Ron Chernow biography of Hamilton, because of course, and a copy of The Ones and Future King. And then very far at the bottom, we don't really need to see it, it's my Harry Potter books. I couldn't bear to get rid of them, but I don't know. I have really mixed feelings regarding um, them and J.K. Rowling. Um, <laughs> then over there are some like spare copies that I just need to get rid of, because like, I, I have copies that I prefer. Like I, bought, I had a paperback and I bought the hardcover and I don't need both of them kind of situation. So that, that is my bookshelf tour, and I feel like it got sloppy at the end, so I'm very sorry about that, but there's not a lot of room to work because there's, like, my bed. Okay, it's our squish, some yarn, a chest, um, my lamp. Yeah. Okay, I really hope you liked that. 
uh, like I said, some of the shelves were filmed a lot easier than others and quality, you know, reflected that. I really enjoyed, you know, doing it. I love sharing my books and talking about my books and everything and I love watching people's bookshelf tours and yes, like I said, these change a lot. I want to do another video in a year, but if it changes drastically or I find myself moving locations or something, I'll definitely do a, a shelf tour prior to that as long as there's time. I really hope you liked it. Did you see any books on my shelf that you're like, ah, Sam, I, that's my favorite too, or you haven't read that yet, you stupid idiot. Like, you know, talk to me. Let me know down below. And if you've done a bookshelf tour, let me know that as well, because like I said, super relaxing, super zen to watch those, especially like early in the morning when I'm still like waking up a little bit. I can like interact with books on this level. It's, I love it. It's great. All right. I will see you. I hope you're having a great rest of your day. I hope that you're staying warm if it is cold where you're at and you're staying comfortable if it is warm where you're at. And I hope you are reading a wonderful book. Bye-bye.